Many different factors shape microtubules into the mitotic spindle, but plenty of questions remain about the precise organisation and behaviour of microtubules in this structure. Francois Nedelec from the EMBL in Heidelberg in Germany explains more. You know, the spindle looks static, but in reality it is a steady state. So it remains, you know, a constant lens and a remarkable geometry. But it's made of microtubule which turn over. So the dynamics of the microtubule is, is very fast and the overall structure is stable. Nedelec teamed up with Rose Laughlin and Rebecca Heald from the University of California in Berkeley to investigate several aspects of spindle microtubule organization. For example, are the microtubules long or short in the spindle? Can you make a spindle which is 35 micrometer long if you only have microtubules which are 3 micrometer long? At the moment, we lack a reagent that would label the minus ends of the microtubules. So we don't really know how long the microtubules are. So because we are limited experimentally, we thought we would go on the modeling side. The researchers used a program developed by Nedelec called Cytosim to model the assembly of metaphase spindles in Xenopus egg extracts. Their initial simulation consisted of several components known to control spindle formation, dynamic microtubules, cross-linking factors to space them apart, and the plus N directed motor Kinesin 5, which pushes anti-parallel microtubules apart in opposite directions. The first step was to put these ingredients in the simulation and see what happens. The simulation made something that looks like a spindle, except it had very, very long, uh, I think Rose called them wispy tails. So instead of a nice pole that would look like a lemon, if you wish, you would have some very, very long microtubules that extend very far away from the meat zone. And so to get the poles, we added an enzyme that can uh, bind to the tips of the microtubules and eat them. These microtubule-eating enzymes are the kinesin 13s, KIF2A and MCAC, which depolymerize microtubules from their minus ends. The researchers added kinesin 13 activity into their model, along with a mechanism to concentrate the enzymes at spindle poles. Simplifying the in vivo situation a little, kinesin 13s were modeled as being recruited by the minus end cross-linking protein NUMA, which was transported to minus ends by the motor protein dynein. With this mechanism added to the model, Depolymerization activity was low at the spindle midzone and high at the poles, which were now kept tightly focused, leading to a simulated spindle that in many ways looked like the real thing. It produces a spindle which has a lot of properties that we know of a real spindle. So there is flux, the microtubule are pushed by kinesin 5 in both directions, and also, which is very important, the microtubules are dynamic, so they grow and they shrink, and after shrinkage they disappear and then new microtubules are being nucleated constantly. And all this creates a steady state which has a, a well-defined lens and a, with poles and a, a symmetry. There was no model that we knew of that could recreate the spindle with dynamic microtubules. So it's a step forward in the field, I think. Because the microtubules are dynamic and can disassemble, Laughlin et al. included two ways of generating new microtubules in their simulation. The first mechanism involves a gradient of GTP-bound RAN protein that promotes microtubule nucleation around chromosomes. The second pathway augments these microtubules by nucleating new filaments from the side of pre-existing ones. In the simulation, we put these two pathways of nucleation, chromatin-mediated and, and augmentation, and they need to operate both of them at the same time to get a, a spindle of the right lens. The researchers' simulated spindle contained microtubules with a truncated exponential length distribution and a mean length of 6.5 microns. The length distribution of microtubules in the spindle is not known with great precision. So the model you know, exhibits a certain length distribution, but we uh, cannot for sure compare it with experiments. But that would be a very strong test of the model, and that would be a, a, a very important information that we need to get in order to uh, further define the theoretical description of the spindle. However, by varying the simulation's parameters, the researchers found that microtubule length has little influence on the overall length of the spindle. In the simulation, we could make two spindles of the same length, 
and one would have short microtubules and the other one would have long microtubules. So we can demonstrate that the length of the spindle is independent of the length of the microtubules. But we also found that the length of the spindle is related to the lifetime of the microtubule. So if they survive longer, you get longer spindle, and if they are a short lifetime, you tend to get shorter spindles. Loughlin et al.'s model suggests that dynamic microtubules form a steady-state bipolar structure through several basic activities. Kinesin-5 slides anti-parallel microtubules toward opposite poles. Kinesin-13s are transported to microtubule minus ends, which they depolymerize and focus into spindle poles. And nucleation factors generate new microtubules throughout the spindle via both chromatin-mediated and augmentation pathways. It's a very partial uh, and simplified model. There are many elements missing, so we'd like to know, for instance, if we can add a centrosome into the picture and still get the same properties. We want to add the chromosomes to see if they stay in the mid-plane. We don't have the kinetochores on the chromosomes, so all these are elements to add. Another step is to make the model three-dimensional, Right now, it's a 2D simulation, so there's still lots of work to follow up and and try to get a a functional structure. In the meantime, you can read more about this initial model of microtubule dynamics in metaphase spindles in the paper by Loughlin et al., published in the December 27th edition of the Journal of Cell Biology.